Hey guys, Dusty Baker at Cross Turners Bison. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you guys for watching. We're doing something fun today. One of my favorite things is rotating the bison. This is how you rotate bison. We're gonna hop in the Ranger. We've been training them in this Ranger. And so uh, I'm gonna drive down the pasture. We'll find the yearlings herd and then we'll uh, see how they respond to the ATV. Again, they've been doing good so far. I'm gonna take a sack of cubes down there with me, rattle the sack a little bit, get them excited. And uh, we're gonna rotate pastures with them. So we'll see how they do. Here we go. Are you ready to go? Are you ready? Ready to go rotate the bison? Uh, uh, uh. I think we're ready this morning. Good morning, good morning, kids. Oh yeah. Say so I think they're ready to run. The fact that they ran up here when I pulled the ATV in means they're ready. Here comes Bobby. I like that name. Somebody recommended that name for our bobtail heifer here. Look at that little bobtail go. I think we'll call you Bobby. I like it. And here's our boy. Leader of the pack. Mr. Haas. Haas, you ready to run, buddy? You ready to get it? Let's get it. You guys ready? Got some feed for you. Oh yeah, got his attention. Got his attention. You ready, buddy? You guys ready to run? Maya, not so sure. So the plan is here as we are going to go from, basically we're kind of up at the front of the Ponderosa. We're up here where the feeder is that you see all the time. Uh, I've got to take them down there and run them through a gate. They're gonna follow me, as you hope. Shake the uh, sack a little bit. Hopefully I don't have to use any cubes and they're just gonna follow me down there and uh, we'll open up the gate and let them through. So uh, let's put the drone up and let's do it. All right, here we go ladies and hoss.
Koo showed up. Koo showed up. <laughs> they didn't go very far. Sometimes you never know, especially with yearlings. I was assuming they were just going to run and run and run, but that tells you how hungry they are for fresh grasses right there because as soon as I opened that gate, matter of fact, they started eating this grass right here under the gate, <laughs> some Bermuda right there. They literally stopped as soon as they uh, found the green, fresh grass. And so, uh, yep, it's all part of the, the drought. And let me show you what it looks like from the sky view. You can see here in pasture one how it's green, it's greener than pasture two, which is where they've been. Um, so the big Joe herd was in pasture two first, and then we moved them over to uh, pasture three and four. Once I finished that, which is 40 acres, pasture one is 20 acres, pasture two is 20 acres, and we just basically put them back into pasture one, which is the very first pasture we ever put our bison in. And so this pasture here has had 35, 35 days of recovery time, which is what these pastures need. Now, it's not as long as we want, but with the conditions and everything going on, actually having to move them into pasture two and rotate them out and give this pasture some recovery once Big Joe and them left. And so what I did with this pasture is I just let it set. And uh, it has came back with some green grass. And as you can tell, they, they hit it pretty hard, pretty fast, um, which is good. Now, with a little bit of moisture, a little bit more moisture, we would have had more growth. But with a half an inch of rain and 35 days of recovery, a little bit of it came up. So what that means is as far as grazing this time of the year as we're approaching fall, um, you got the cool season grasses, uh, fall and winter grasses that will come in that they can still graze. Now, that doesn't mean it's a whole lot of grazing. That doesn't mean it's a whole lot of grass. However, it is some grass that they'll be able to graze over winter. Uh, plus we feed them cubes, um, the mineral licks and hay. think they're sure of you. I like to play with the yearlings. It's pretty neat if you just stop and sit out here, you know, safely in the ATV or something, a vehicle, whatever it is. They'll just swarm around you so that they do their thing. You see all the little cowbirds just showed up and are back at work again. It's, it's nice to just sit out here, peace and quiet, and uh, listen to them graze. It's just, a, it's just a great sound to hear. 
and uh, just lucky to have a little bit of regrowth so that uh, they can get some grazing in before winter hits. Hey guys, by the way, don't forget to check out our website at crosstimbersbison.com. We've got the new honey barbecue sticks uh, out. Uh, we've got some jerky uh, about to come out very soon. And then we have our original uh, snack sticks as well. We've got some new shirts. I love this long sleeve shirt. It's got the little hoodie on it. It's, it's light. On cool days like this, it's nice to wear. And then also what I love about these is if it gets a little chillier for you, you can put a vest on and, you know, uh, keep your core warm. So I'll wear this shirt with a vest too uh, when it gets a little cooler here and there. All right, since the, uh, I didn't have to use actually the sack of feed at all. Uh, usually you just have to rattle it and follow you. That's why you train them here on the Polaris. But the big Joe Herd is up here and been hanging out with me since I've been hanging out with the yearlings and let him in here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and give the big Joe Herd a sack of cubes. So let's uh, hop in pasture three and four, give him some cubes. It's fun to catch them while they're in a line. And the reason I put cubes out here kind of on the road, it's not very gravelly. Uh, it's mostly packed down grass over time, but I like to uh, put it here. It doesn't make them fight through the fight through the grass to get to the cubes. I like if I put it out here in the pasture. So, and plus you may lose a little bit more. Now, not all ranchers and, and, and cattle people or or, or places are able to do this because you just kind of give them cubes out in the middle of a pasture wherever they lie but here I just do it because it reduces the loss of the cubes and it's easier for them to find instead of digging through the grass uh, to find it because there's a there's a, quite a bit of grass uh, dormant grass and, and weeds in this pasture here so you guys are probably wondering what is this lane cut here for well when I had the brush hog cutting fire breaks for our fire I brought it over here to pasture three and four and that's basically, I went ahead and brush hogged it. So in case we did start building fence here pretty soon or, or in the near future to cross divide this pasture three or four, this 40 acres, 
we already had a brush hog. There's not gonna be much growth now anyway. So I was like, I got the brush hog over here. I might as well cut it where I think, I hope my straight line off of the existing fence of pasture one and two to go back west to tag in to the back cross fence. It is always one of my favorite things to do is to rotate bison and we hope to keep doing this so much more whenever uh, we keep working on project 189 and get more and more ground for these guys. So thank you for being with us on this uh, pretty day, hanging out with uh, America's grazer. Thank you guys for watching our channel today. We love raising these animals and we're lucky and blessed to do it. Thank you for being a part of this. We'll see you guys soon.